Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the area of the curve for metabolic heart data using breath by breath. So, uh, to get started we're going to have to do some setup. Just setting up the rest, liters per minute, milliliters per kg per minute, and the O2 requirement. Save us some time typing there. Okay, now let's figure out these numbers. So make sure you use the correct column, liters per minute here. We're going to go down to minute three. We're going to use minute three until minute five. We're going to use that average there. That looks like an acceptable value. And the same thing for milliliters per kg per minute. So minute three, down to minute five. Those Look great. Then exercise one. So exercise, we had them exercise for 10 minutes total starting at minute five. And we're going to go down to actually minute three and actually start at minute three until 15 to get the average. We hope, we at least think that they hit steady state around there. And make sure you do go all the way down until 15, the very first one that says 15. Make sure you're in the right columns as well. Great. So 13 until 15. Very first one, great. Those look like acceptable values. Now we're going to add a couple columns. Great. Area under the curve. O2, average difference, milliliters per kg per minute, and O2, and this is in milliliters per kg. Don't type minutes because it is not minutes. This one's in liters. Just a couple more things. Let's come down to minute five. Highlight that row. We're going to add two rows in, and then we're going to go down to 15, add two more rows. Make sure, sorry, make sure you, it's the one after that one. So the very next one, so keep this one up here with these. And now we're good to go. So now we're going to do some differences here. Okay. Make sure we're using the O2 requirement and milliliters per kg per minute. And then come back into that formula. We're going to add some dollar signs there. That makes it so that it stays the exact same all the way down without changing, which is lovely. Saves us a lot of time in typing. And then we're going to do the area of the curve here. So those two differences added together, divide by two, and multiply by the time difference. And make sure this is the first one, this is the second one. Should not be the other way around. Great. And then we can apply that throughout. And now let's figure out how much. So this tells us this person was in 47 liters, sorry, milliliters per kilogram body weight deficit over that exercise period of time, 10 minutes. Okay, let's figure that out in liters per minute. We need the body mass, kilograms, and divided by 1,000. So 4.13 liters, great. Now, we need to figure out the epoch. So this minus, and we'll use milliliters per kilogram resting value, great. Let's add those dollar signs back in because we want to be able to apply that throughout. Save us some calculation. Save you a little bit more calculation. Make sure you come up to one that is actually one of the air into the curve ones. And then make sure you start one below. Make sure you start one below it. And you can paste that on in. If you want to double check, it's only take into account these cells. Perfect. As is. Oh, looks like it got some additional thing that we don't care about down here. Let's take the sum of that. 
So this tells us how much epoch that that person had over that ex uh, from that exercise period till the uh, five minute and throughout the five minutes of rest. So 30 milliliters per kilogram uh, body weight of oxygen that they breathed in excess over that exercise period of time. Let's come here to the kilograms. Now I'm figuring it out in liters per minute. So 2.65 liters that they breathed in excess from exercise and throughout that five minutes of rest or recovery, if you will. Let's figure out the total def uh, deficit. So let's add these two numbers together and you should get a negative number. I don't expect them over that five minutes to recover entirely or to be back above um, their baseline at least. Of back to zero essentially. All right, so they are in deficit still of 16, almost 17 milliliters per kilogram body weight and one point or, or if you will, 1.48 liters. Great, we're done with that part. Now let's come up here, so minute five. Now we're gonna calculate the area of the curve for liters per minute. You might say we already did that. Well, this is gonna be for a different purpose. We're gonna get the energy expenditure. So this plus this divided by, oops, divided by two times the difference in time Oh, looks like I made a mistake. Ah, right here. Forgot a parenthesis. Okay, great. And you can apply that throughout. All right, lots of small numbers. What they, do they mean? Well, each breath, that's how much oxygen you used. And then total, if we just sum it all up, gets us 32.6651 liters that they breathe or used, not breathed, but used over that entire exercise period. And let's just check how long that exercise period was. 10 minutes, great. Basically on the dot, barely, just over, that's okay. Then uh, it all comes down to how much they, or, how, or when they breathe, essentially. Okay, so now let's get this in kcals. If you remember, five kcals per one liter of O2. We got liters, liters of O2, let's just multiply by five then. Okay, so 163 kcals over that entire 10 minutes of exercise, essentially. Now, let's calculate what the rate of that was, rate of energy expenditure. And that's in kcals per minute. If you remember, we got kcals and we got minutes. So let's take these two numbers and divide them. Great, 16.33 kcals per minute. This value will come in handy when you're doing uh, the last problem on the homework worksheet, just so you know. So you want to make sure you have this. So that concludes this um, area of the curve calculation demonstration for KNH382, no, sorry, KNH382, KNH468 labs. If you have any questions, please contact your lab instructor or myself. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, look forward to doing these again in a couple different contexts. Um, so make sure you know how to do this. You will have videos going forward though for it, but just hope you understand what's going on here and what we're calculating and why we want to get these numbers. So anyway, please um, contact your lab instructors again if you have any questions or myself and uh, take care.